back to this ANSYS video course on designing waveguides using the latest student version of the ANSYS Electronics Desktop, AEDT for short. And in that previous video module, we created the simulation model for that rectangular waveguide and the example David Pozar's microwave engineering textbook. In this video, we're going to analyze the results and we're going to post process it in various forms just to get a better understanding of the waveguide mode propagation. So here's the AEDT student version. This is the user interface with that simulated model. And recall that five modes were selected during the waveport assignment and view these modes. How do you do that? In the project manager window, expand the port field display, click on the different modes at port two to look at the electric field patterns for each mode. So here's the view of all the modes. Go ahead, pause the video here and try to identify as many modes as possible. Here is the correct mode representations. Take that first picture on the top left. Here you see the variation of E is only along one axis. It can be either TE10 or TE01. Neither TM01 or the TM10 mode exists in a rectangular waveguide. But how do you know what the difference between TE01 or TE10 is? The TE stands for the transverse electric mode. The wave is propagating along the Z axis. So the TE10 states there's one mode in the X direction and the zero says there's no wave in the Y direction. I know each of the lobe defines half a wavelength. And if there are two main lobes in the X direction, it's now TE20. And similarly, if the field varies in both X and Y directions, then we have a TE11 or a TM11 mode. And now these modes will have the same cutoff frequency and we can identify them by viewing the field distribution. The first five modes in the rectangular waveguides are TE10, TE20, TE01, TE11, and TM11. So let's proceed how to find the cutoff frequencies of these modes by plotting the imaginary parts of the propagation constant gamma. Right mouse click on the results category and select create model, solution data report, rectangular plot. And in that pop-up window under the category select gamma and under the quantity select all the modes of port one by using the control key. And under the function select IM and that indicates imaginary part, Click on a new report and then close. Now here's the rectangular plot for the phase constant, gamma. These define the cutoff frequencies and these values for all the modes are shown at the intersection point of that marker. So as stated earlier, notice that the cutoff frequencies are the same for modes four and five from port one. And similarly, you can plot the real part of the propagating constant, which is the attenuation constant for all the modes, but we have a PEC. So let's plot the E field distribution for the modes excited in the waveguide. Go ahead, switch back to the object select mode by using that O key. Select the object, WG underscore fill, right mouse click and select plot fields, E, mag E. A window pops up under the context field. Go to the solution and select sweep from the drop down menu and select any frequency greater than one of the cutoff modes and check the plot on the surface only option and click done. So here's the E field plot. Let's animate this plot for a better understanding. Go to the project manager window, right mouse click on mag underscore E plot and select animate. A new window pops up and select all the default values and click okay. So here's the TE10 mode propagation, the lowest order mode of propagation, the lowest order cutoff frequency. For clarity, let's look at the field plot in the project manner window. Right mouse click on that plot and uncheck the plot visibility. So now let's plot the electric field in vector form. Look at the way the fields are moving. Select the front face, right mouse click, select plot fields, E, vector E. And you can zoom into the plot for a closer look. Go ahead and modify that plot attributes. For better visualization again, double click on that vector plot legend and in the pop-up window, click on scale tab. Click on use limit options and you can change the max value. See what happens. Go to the marker arrow tab. Uncheck the arrow tail. Go to the plots tab 
and change the spacing. Click a close. And now a clear plot of the TE10 mode is visible. And similarly, go ahead and plot and modify the vector plot of the magnetic field to view the field distribution for the different modes. And in that project manager window, right mouse click on excitations category and select edit sources. In the pop-up window, by default, only one incident mode at port one is excited with one watt of power and a zero degree phase. Excite mode two, just go ahead, change that magnitude of the mode two to one and reset the magnitude of mode one to zero. Click OK to accept the changes. The field distribution is updated to mode two. This is the TE20 mode. Go ahead, similarly, you can view the field distribution of the different modes in the waveguide by varying their magnitudes in their phase. And here's a collection of the electric field and the magnetic field distributions for different modes of the waveguide. So let's answer that earlier question about how to identify modes four and five. Go ahead, plot the fields along the coordinate system plane. To do this, in the history T window, expand planes and global XZ plane, select it, plot both the E and H vector plots inside the waveguide and adjust the plot characteristics. And for row four, the electric field is in the XY plane, i.e. the transverse to the wave propagation, which is in the Z direction. So it's the TE11 mode. And the same for mode five. We see that the magnetic field in the XY plane, and so it's a TM11 mode. So far we've discussed simulating the dielectric field rectangular waveguide. So what happens if it's air filled, it's empty? Will the mode cutoff frequencies remain the same or is it gonna change? So let's go find out using the cutoff frequency equation of the rectangular waveguide. And we see that the cutoff frequency is inversely proportional to the square root of the material permittivity. Hence, the cutoff frequency will increase if we replace Teflon with the free space or a vacuum. So here's the rectangular pot and the phase constants of both the cases. And the cutoff frequency of the empty waveguides are shifted to the higher side by a factor of the square root of the relative permittivity of Teflon. Also, the waveguide filling was surrounded by PEC. What if you want to see what the losses are? What if the waveguide walls were made of any conducting material other than PEC? How does that change the cutoff frequency? So there's an option to use a finite conductivity boundary conditions. Go through the link on the screen to the right and that'll uh, show you how to use this feature in AEDT. And these are just one of the few ways in which the AET student version can help the student or the researcher to learn more electric magnetic concept visually and not just by the math equations and numbers. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching this video and to find more information on AEDT HFSS or any of our ANSYS simulation tools, please visit ansys.com forward slash courses today. Thank you.